Hello, my practical people, and welcome back to my channel, The Practical Therapist. I have been away for a little bit. I was a little under the weather, so nothing too serious, just some cold and flu-like symptoms that were, you know, trying to hang on a little bit longer than they should. But either way, I'm back. I am a little raspy. You can hear it, but I'm going to talk through this episode because I wanted to give you guys some good content at the beginning of the year. I hope everyone's 2022 is starting off right. Let's jump right into it. As you see from my title here, um, the title of today's episode is called Using Siren Whistles in Therapy with a Patient with Down Syndrome, Before and After. So um, today's episode is a follow-up on one of my pediatric patients that is currently on my caseload. So I created an early earlier video. So for any of my uh, older subscribers, if you guys have gone through and looked at some of my recent videos, you'll see this video that I'm referencing. So um, I, again, I created an earlier video using this particular patient as a case study for how siren whistles can be used. And in that video, I discussed and targeted oral motor exercises, especially exercises for strengthening and rounding the lip muscles, since this patient has weak lip muscles and weak lip strength due to her diagnosis of Down syndrome. Um, however, although my last video showed the end result, I wanted to show you, my subscribers, what it takes to get to that point. Therefore, in the next slide, please take the time to watch the video from beginning to end. Um, the first part is the before process, which is her initial session back in, I want to say, July of 2021. And the second part is the after. It was about October of 2021 when she met her goal after working hard for three months. So just before we get to the actual slide that has the video, let's just kind of review about this patient. She's a two and a half year old patient, again, with a diagnosis of Down syndrome. She presents with low tone or flaccid or weak cheek muscles. She also presents with lip weakness and reduced lip strength and tone. And the patient requires multiple verbal, visual, auditory, and tactile cues and models to participate in this exercise. So she needed a lot of prompts, cues, um, coaching, and strategies from myself and mom. Okay, so I'm going to play the video in its entirety. Again, um, it's about two minutes long. Watch and then we'll talk a little bit afterwards. Big, very belly. Belly, belly, belly. Got a blow. You're using your tongue. I can see you. Blow. <gasps> Okay, I'm going to um, pause just slightly with that first blow that mom is coaching her through. You hear me in the background as well. You can see that the sound is very weak and sometimes it's inaudible. Again, this is the initial session from July of 2021. Oh. <gasps> Use your belly. Belly. Use your belly. Okay. This is me now giving her more tactile cues. Okay, we're gonna go to the tummy. Let's touch tummy, 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 tummy. So Miss Elsa's gonna do it first, right? Let me tummy. That's me practicing with my whistle. And you also, Big. you also see her touching her tummy as well. Just a side note, guys, in case anyone's wondering, we do have different whistles. I had bought a pack of about 15 whistles off of Amazon. So I had my whistle on the table next to me. So you guys heard me blow and then hand her her whistle. We did not use the same whistles. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. All right, let me go ahead and fast forward now to where she was three months later. So make sure I cue that part of the video up. All right, here we go. Oh, 
I don't even catch your belly. Six, seven, eight, nine. Don't wear yourself out. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Addison. Good job. Yeah. Ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, thirteen. Can we do two more? More. Do it again. One more. Big girl. Yay! All right. All right, guys. So, as you can see and hopefully hear the difference between July of 2021 and October of 2021, what a difference three months of therapy makes. So, let's talk about some takeaways from this video. Hard work plus consistency equals results. Simple math right there. So again, um, I worked very hard with this patient. Mom was very consistent. She showed up, rarely canceled. And if it was a cancellation, it was literally because the patient was sick and not feeling well. So again, hard work plus consistency equals results. A good therapist will be consistent and work hard with you and your child. So um, again, I'm very hands-on. I could sit there and just coach you through it, but you know, just the nature of what I do and loving what I do, I have to jump in there and, and really get hands on. I feel like um, the information that I'm trying to convey to the parent or patient, it translates much better through hands on techniques and strategies. However, again, a good parent will also be consistent and show up for their child to do what needs to be done. And this mom, again, shout out to her. It's a, she's a great example of the type of parents that I need on board, especially when you have a child that, you know, has a diagnosis that's significant like Down syndrome. You know, that child more than likely is going to need, um, you know, lifelong support throughout their lifespan. And just by what I see now, um, I know this child will continue to make gains, um, you know, once she leaves me and the family moves on to other services outside of the um, early intervention program. So um, guys, again, I just wanted to show you guys the beginning and end of a thing. And for this particular patient, just to have her meet that goal and blow that whistle, mom was ecstatic. And for my little friend too, it just made her feel like such a big girl. And these are the type of get small gains that seem small, but they do make a big difference and they um, have a significant impact in some of the families that I work with. So just wanted to show you guys, I'm a little bit peek into my world and what my day-to-day -day looks like from time to time outside of making videos for you guys here on social media. So if you like that and you there's more to come, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Um, I'm thinking about creating um, maybe like a little freebie course on a step-by-step -step process on how I got a patient like that to go from being unable to produce sounds with a siren whistle to making clear audible sounds. Drop me a comment um, if you would like to see that or if you think a course would be helpful if there's something that you guys think you could use and have in your arsenal especially if you have a child that maybe has down syndrome or you know of a child if you're an educator or another type of specialist either way make sure you like share and subscribe and comment on this video and i will catch you guys in the next one